So let's talk through the next section. And the rest of our content is going to be on kind of the historical perspective of the product, the global server load balancing. If you remember, I told you that to, to learn this stuff, you kind of have to understand one, one set of pieces and one part of the configuration. But before you can learn that, you have to learn this. But before you can learn this, you got to learn it. So we're in kind of a catch-22. We'll just uh, go a little ways down one of the discussions, do a lab, and then we'll kind of finish with the other one and, and round, round both out. But this is one of those products that uh, you, you kind of have to uh, learn a little bit about both sides gradually. First section, we'll, we'll talk things like data centers. We need to discuss the iQuery protocol and then server objects. And then this, the last section, DNS does, Big IP DNS does have a, a use or, or maybe I should say uses the term virtual servers, but from a different perspective. LTM, a virtual server, is the front end, right, to load balance pool members. With Big IP DNS, virtual servers are the pool members themselves. We'll get there, but just understand that virtual server, at this point, just understand virtual servers are used in a different context in this product. So we got to kind of change our idea of how, how we're going to uh, treat virtual servers with, with GTM or Big IP DNS. Okay, so first we need to kind of go through some, some of the base uh, terminology for uh, the industry knowing uh, the term uh, GSLB is referred to as global server load balancing and how the industry kind of treats that is it does have um, distribution, other, other vendors use this including DNS to distribute uh, requests across or clients across data centers, more of a wide area load balancing. They all typically use the DNS traffic um, uh, mechanism to do that, just like we do. You, you have varying degrees, us or them, uh, with monitoring capability, we've got a lot of monitors built in and some very sophisticated. There's more monitors in GTM or Big IP DNS than there are in LTM. Have more options. Um, because of kind of how the nature of the product works, so you got to go through firewalls and, and things like that that make it a little bit more complicated. And, and really the whole idea behind this is to make that uh, DNS uh, re resolution process a little bit more intelligent and not hand out an answer <laughs> that is a site that's down. Right? We don't want to give that out as an answer so that the clients uh, resolve correctly, they resolve the name correctly, but they're not going anywhere because the site's down. So that's the idea behind all this. We need to talk about some of these objects to kind of build up our understanding of how we're going to go configure in lab. At a high level, there's um, what, what you'll see referred to in the, in the, in the GUI is, as data centers. And it's kind of a logical representation of our data centers. It doesn't have to match how your data centers are actually configured. But that's what you probably want to use it, uh, use it to do is make it look like what your data centers really are. So in our case, we're showing a primary, a secondary, and maybe a disaster recovery site as an example. The next object that you kind of start talking about or configuring in, in this process is what's called a server object. Server objects are the high-level objects. And uh, I don't remember which one of you, but one of you referred to if I talk to a big IP, a virtual server, you know, I might have more smarts. But it doesn't have to be a virtual server on another big IP platform. It could just be, in, in our case, maybe it's just an individual server, an Apache web server, that is this high-level server object. This is kind of equivalent to nodes in LTM, right? Higher level object, the node is the higher level, and then underneath that are, are pool members with ports, right? This is kind of the same idea. It's the higher level object, it's the, the node or the server itself. Underneath that then, we, have, we do have this concept of virtual servers in this product, but it's different. It's not <laughs> used the same way that you do in LTM. The virtual servers actually end up becoming pool members. So in this case, we're showing a couple of port 80 virtuals. 
a couple of port, uh, well, one port 21 virtual, right, and in different data centers. These virtuals end up becoming members of the pool. So the virtual servers that we are configuring in, in a few minutes will end up becoming members of this DNS pool. And I purposely, it doesn't say DNS pool, but I purposely changed or, or say those words so that you understand it's a different pool. It's not an LTM pool, right? We're going to use it in a different way. Now, if these guys are the members of the pool and this is the potential answers I hand out, what's the answer to a DNS query? The IP address, right? A record, IP address. So why do we have ports? Why do we have ports? Because That's where the listeners are, but what are we trying to do with this? We're trying to, we're checking availability, right? So our monitors are going to be monitoring virtual servers or pools, right? We've got to know what is the app. Well, in this case, it's a port 80 application. That's what we're going to go check, right? So the monitors need the port. What we hand back, though, to the DNS query question is just the IP address of one of the virtual servers, okay? So we got a DNS pool, and then above that, we have this white IP thing that we just did in lab, right? And the white IP will hand back one of the pool members as the answer to the DNS query. So you get kind of the same concept, but again, Virtual servers are used differently here. The virtual server term is used differently here. Good? And we'll, we'll explore this more. Just trying to introduce the, the uh, nomenclature, the names that we're going to be using so that when we start talking about it, you, you know how they're, how they're used or how the term's used differently, specifically uh, virtual servers. So when we're configuring servers, we're going to do this in lab in just a minute. Yeah. Correct. Very, very different idea here, right? A wide IP is not a virtual server in front that we, you know, hit, right? It's just a name. It's a name. And the name needs to match, the name of the wide IP needs to match the DNS name that we're trying to make an intelligent resolution to. In mul multiple, yep. And you have one record DNS and five dot and five dot. So yep. the real Sometimes I'm going to one IP, and this IP can be is available on each device. It's more easy than yep. doing this. I yep. understand the concept. Yep. Good. Good questions. Um, when we're configuring the server objects, that I said that was the first thing we're going to do. That's kind of the high-level object. This is what the screen looks like. We, we give it a name, give it a server name, right? And then what type of server? Could be a big IP, could be just a host, right? Some node out there that may have multiple apps underneath it, like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, but it's the whatever type of object, could just be a host, could be other load balancers. So if you look underneath that pull down list, you'll see a list of other load balancers uh, listed there that you could, you could select. And then we have this idea of a address and a translation. This is kind of an important concept to talk about. The address is what your big IP DNS or GTM box can reach. If the actual servers are on the other side of a NAT, then we have to put in a translation address. So this is the, the address is what we will talk to and send our traffic to if we're doing monitoring, right? But what we actually want to ask about is the inside address, because that's the only thing that that app or that device will know. They won't know the address. If you're on the other side of a NAT, you have to fill in the translation also. Okay, uh, what else do we need to talk about? Mentioned that already. Which data center this server is going to be in? And then we may do monitors at the server level. Might do monitors at the pool level, DNS pool level, but might do monitors at the server level. 
sell them are we doing monitors at the virtual server level? Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this more in, in the next section, but you can do virtual server auto discovery if it's a big IP, meaning I can talk to that device and say, tell me about all of your virtual servers that you have configured, rather than me having to manually add them. Right? So we can do, if it's a big IP object, then uh, we can auto discover all the virtual servers that that big IP has configured. And then we would, from the list in the pool, I want this pool, I want this virtual server, I want this virtual server, this virtual server as my members of the pool, right? So we can go auto discover and then just add them. Good? On the server object? But then you have to provide the credentials. Not the credentials. This is the uh, IP and port if we're doing it manually. Yeah, but no, if you enabled. If you enabled, then we would not provide, we'll talk about that later. We would not provide the credentials. There's a different, in just a couple slides, we'll talk about how we would go get, grab that stuff from, from the device. Different mechanism than what you might think. Good, good question, though. We'll get there. So uh, first, we kind of need to talk about how uh, these uh, both GTMs and DNSs talk to other LTMs, but they also can get set up in what's called a sync group. We might have different, th so with big IP, the high availability, the LTM configuration typically is two big IPs in one data center, at least two, right? One is active processing the traffic, the other one is a hot standby, but they're, they're right next to each other. Where they sit in the data center, they're right next to each other. And if this guy doesn't continue process, it doesn't keep saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, then this guy will take over immediately, right? Different idea with GTM in terms of high availability. It's not as needed to have two in a pair at every data center, but it's very important to have a DNS or GTM in each data center, right? That's your availability standpoint, right? You want to have not one link to one data center go out and then you, you lost your whole DNS infrastructure, right? You want a GTM or DNS in each data center not as needed to have pairs in each data center. If you can sell that, cool. <laughs> but not always as needed, but it is important to have one in each data center. Then typically what you do is you set the two GTMs or DNSs or three or four, depending on how many data centers you have, you set them in what's called a, set them up in what's called a DNS sync group, big IP DNS sync group, a little bit different than a device group, and they talk to each other. How they talk to each other is using this, this protocol called iQuery. It's been around forever. It's an F5 standard that we use. We've used it in other products, if you remember. We, we used it in device groups to talk between different device group members. We also used it in Big IQ, right? But originally it came out for this product. For the, the original product was named 3DNS. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you bad developer humor. So the way to remember this is it was for that product. What's the DNS port number? 53, right? So the actual number is 4353 of the, of the port, right? Why do we need to know that? Firewall. Firewall rules, right? Because we might be talking between a GTM or DNS to another data center across a firewall, and we need to go open that port. This is how they talk to each other. Not just the, the GTM or DNS boxes in a sync group, but also those devices to big IPs. So you gotta remember that iQuery protocol. Uh, it is encrypted, and you can do IQ dump to kind of look at that if you want to look at the, the traffic. Before you actually get devices talking to each other, you have to set up an initial conversation. So the question Adriano asked about how do we do, we do their uh, permissions, like their username, password. In this case, no. What you have to do is you go... Um, configure NTP, just like we have in the past, right? So they're all at the same date time stamp. Otherwise, this iQuery protocol will fail. And then we exchange SSL certs, device certs, not 
user certs, right? Uh, so device certs are exchanged, so you have to have port 22 open, and you actually run a command to do this, big IP add, to do the exchange of the certs. Once you do that, then the second step is you need to make sure that this daemon running on each of the big IPs, both LTMs and GTMs or DNSs, is at the same level. The actual code or uh, daemon that talks the iQuery protocol between is at the same version. So that's a, a script called Big3D install. So you run that. If those two both work, now we're talking. So it's, it's a SSL cert, not an admin username and password. Okay, so this is one of the steps we're going to do in lab. And what else? Oh, to lab. So in this lab, not real exciting. <laughs> we're going to go uh, add data centers, no biggie. Then we're going to add server objects, and then we're going to go run these commands. Now, what you should see at the end of this lab is when we create the server objects, uh, big IP A is the GTM or DNS box. Big IP B is not going to have GTM or DNS provisioned. It's just an LTM. It's functioning kind of as a device in another data center. That's the idea that we're trying to convey here. Okay? So you don't need to go configure GTM or DNS on that device. A, you're going to bring up and you're going to discover some server objects. And they should turn green just like that, right? It's on that device. B will probably start out with a status of blue. And then if you ran those two scripts correctly and they talk to each other appropriately and port 443 is open on port lockdown, then that iQuery uh, conversation will happen. And after a period of time, that big IPB server object should turn to green. Okay? If you get to the end of the lab and it's not green, yell for help. I'll come over and see what we, what we can look at. Okay?